Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the CEO of Pawn Technologies, Grant Smith. He's going to touch on the U.S. government's new voluntary carbon trading market scheme. He's also going to share his thoughts on the global algae proteins market reaching $1.2 billion by 2027 and what the potential drivers of this increase could be. And he's also going to give us an update on Pawn Technologies. But before we bring Grant on, if you like our videos, give us a quick subscribe by hitting that subscribe button below me there. Hey, Grant, welcome back to The Dive. Hey, Cassandra, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's start off with the macro. The US government has unveiled a new voluntary carbon trading market scheme with the aim of boosting private investment in clean energy projects in developing countries. What are your thoughts on carbon market initiatives like this? Is there a chance that we see meaningful change? Yes, I think so. And I, I personally think we, we need this. So some you know, environmental advocates feel this U.S. plan led by Kerry is definitely a step in the right direction, especially in developing countries like countries in Africa, for example, where they're considered high risk. There's not a lot of capital being put into those countries. But a plan like this that develops capital to go into these countries is definitely a step in the right direction. I think, you know, Kerry's plan, it delivers that strategic capital and allows projects to move forward. Wind and solar, especially solar in a continent like Africa, they, that's a free source of energy. And as long as there's a reduction in coal-fired power plants, I think some of the um, articles that I've read, you know, then it helps the, the projects move forward. And I will talk specifically to a potential partner we're working with in Africa. Um, one of the concerns is the cost of electricity to power a plant in, in the continent of Africa. So if we were to get a solar farm to power a pond plant in Africa, this could potentially make that project move forward. Currently, in the discussions we're having with them, the cost of electricity may be a problem to move this plant forward. But if we had a wind or solar option to power that plant, then a pond plant could capture that CO2 and close the loop, create that circular economy, and grow algae to feed people within the continent of Africa. So, yeah, I studied that one a little bit recently, and uh, those are sort of my thoughts on it. According to reportlinker.com, the global algae proteins market will reach $1.2 billion by 2027. What do you think the main drivers for the market will be? It's a great question. We've touched on this before in, in a prior uh, you know, interview together. And it's interesting to note, I was in Las Vegas last week at an ingredient, a global ingredient trade show called Supply Side West. And all of the major CPGs and brands were there. And if I was to sort of give you the Coles notes of the show, one of the interesting trends that I saw at that show was algae and algae protein or algae oil. So ingredients from algae. Three to four years ago, five years ago, that was not the case. So I think this is what's driving that $1.2 billion number is that companies that are in the space of providing, you know, Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger, they are driving new innovation in the food industry. They realize that in order to feed the planet, we need reliable, sustainable sources of protein, and algae is part of that solution. So the 1.2 billion number, I think, is even um, a little on the low side. I think this will continue. You know, we, we sell ingredients at Pond. We'll touch on Pond Naturals later on uh, today, but we definitely feel that ingredients from algae that are sustainable and reliable and clean are the future of innovation in the food industry. So you have these major CPGs looking for that. You have a number of companies investing in Canada with pea protein. There's a number of plants being built in Manitoba, and that is what will be used in the future for something like a Tim Hortons chili. Instead of having only beef, you'll have pea protein, rice protein, spirulina protein from algae. They'll all be ingredients in these sort of beyond meat type formulations. Okay, so yeah, let's talk a little bit more about Pond Naturals now. Could you give us some more color on this? Certainly. So Pond Naturals was developed to be basically the off taker or the sales arm of Pond Technologies. Again, Pond Technologies is a clean tech and an ag tech. So we sort of created Pond Pon Naturals to be the ag tech arm. So Pond Tech takes two tons of CO2 to grow one ton of algae. So a lot of 
companies were in discussions with, they say, well, who's going to take all that algae? So Pond Naturals is one avenue. We have our partner, AB Agri, another avenue they wanted for fish feed and animal feed. And we have a number of companies that we're in discussions with who actually want the algae because they actually have a source for it, be it oil or, or protein, et cetera. So Pond Naturals is really our, again, our sales arm. We have a number of customers we're currently selling algae to. We grow astaxanthin and, and create revenue in, in selling that to our customer base. And as we grow and develop new strains of algae and extract ingredients from algae, like algae oil and different extracts, we will sell those through Pond Naturals to our customer base. So you recently announced the extension of the non-brokered private placement, which includes insider participation. Where will the net proceeds be used? Certainly. So we were, we were pleased to report that to the market because it was significant insider participation, uh, greater than 50%. So I think that sends a message where we feel, you know, we're at a point of commercialization. We call it Pond 2.0. So part of the proceeds of that will be to putting what we're calling our fifth generation lights into our St. Mary's cement uh, plant in, in St. Mary's, Ontario. So it's just a couple hours outside of Toronto. So we've developed we furthered the tech and what we're doing there is putting these new lights into the plant. And we have a number of customers coming to tour that plant and they want to see it fully operational with the new tech. What that leads to is companies coming to, to see pond and they don't require themselves to build a power a pilot plant. They can move right to the full scale plant. And really it's very important that everyone understands this. Our technology, you know, can be viewed. We have a, large scale 22,000 liter photobioreactor with smaller seed tanks, all connected to stack gas at St. Mary's Cement. So that's sort of our proof of concept. That was our, our hub where we got started. We have 33 global patents. They were all designed and granted based on us using the St. Mary's uh, stack gas in our photobioreactors. So again, it's several hundred thousand dollars. We're upgrading the lights. And then we have you know, customers coming to tour that facility. And the goal being when they see that facility, there's no need for them to have, you know, a full scale pilot plant of their own. They can move right to the commercialization stage and, and implement a plant. Now the online store for algae oil caught our attention. For our viewers, yes. what can you tell us about Regenerex? What separates this from other commercial products? Certainly. So Regenerex is, is a brand under Pond Naturals. So we grow a red two-stage algae. We have a plant in Agassiz, BC. It's outside of Vancouver. It's a very good story. Again, it fits well with our, with our clean tech and ag tech. So we have a zero waste to landfill model. We grow the, this red algae there. We extract the oil and we put it into soft gels and we sell that, that oil at retail. We have a natural wet extraction process, which also highlights the, the quality and the efficacy of our, of our astaxanthin oil. And by having our own brand, it's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a product that we can sell and gain revenue from, but it also validates our, our com complete, uh, what I'll call model, where we grow algae and then we sell it to the marketplace. We have a Health Canada site license. We have a natural product number with our product and we have uh, you know, some nice steady growing revenues with that brand. Amazing. Okay, so Grant, lastly, before we let you go, what are the potential catalysts investors should be looking out for with Pontech as we head into 2023? Certainly. Well, I think it, it all centers around you know, the, the continuation of the tech, the advancement at St. Mary's, customers touring that facility. And again, our pipeline is full. So our goal is to convert you know, several of these customers that are interested in 2023 and into 2024 to build pond uh, facilities. And again, as a reminder, we have a license model. So pond doesn't have to own all those plants. First and foremost, we're a technology company. So we will license the tech to an emitter. The emitter will reduce their CO2. They will grow algae. And then that algae is used to whether it's fertilizer, animal feed, human feed, and even can be used for active pharmaceutical proteins. So Pond's model is more like Apple than Microsoft. You know, we, we sell a license up front, we sell a black box with pumps and equipments and tanks, that grows the algae. The emitter gets the carbon credits. So that's, that's really the most important thing that can't be forgotten about. 
uh, that will continue to, you know, you'll continue to pay to pollute. Um, we're working with a company called Gold Standard Carbon Credits, and we've heard numbers as high as $1,000 a ton. So we feel that there's a lot of future potential for people to work with Pond. And then again, the value of the algae on the back end. We get a royalty and perpetuity on that algae. And if that algae is not needed by that customer, we arrange a, an agreement where Pond Naturals acquires that algae and we sell that into the marketplace. So going forward into 2023, we continue to build out our, our large scale demonstration plant at AB Agri in the UK. We continue to finish in Q4 this year, our St. Mary's upgrade with the, the new lights and the new tech. And we feel that that'll help convert. And um, you know, maybe on our next interview, we'll have some, some further updates for that. Yeah, definitely. Is there much maintenance once it's all installed or who takes care of that? That's a great question. You know, it's really quite an automated technology because we have a, a patented process on, on the harvesting of algae. So once the light, the water and the CO2 is in the tank, the algae grows very, very quickly and it grows 24 seven. That's really our secret sauce. Anyone else growing algae in outdoor ponds or in any other system, you're not really growing 24 seven. So we're 24 seven, we're capturing CO2 and 24 seven, we're growing algae and 24 seven, we're harvesting that algae. So a lot of that is fairly automated. Uh, we'll, get a, we'll get a plant up and running. And then typically, you know, the company, the host company, their own staff can take it on from there. So it's not that laborious. I've been in quite a few plants personally all over the world. Um, and you'd be surprised today with automation where you really don't have to have as nearly as many staff as you would think to run that operation. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Such an interesting story and we'll catch up with you again thank later, you. Grant. You bet. We'll keep in touch and look forward to the next time. Thank you everyone at home for tuning in today. If you want to learn more about small caps, make sure to hit that subscribe button before you leave so you get updates about our future videos. Bye.